Welcome back, everybody, to the Success Partner Podcast. I am your host, Dayan, and we have Carla Titus with us today as our guest speaker. Thanks for having me. So excited for our conversation today. You are very welcome. And as you know, as for me as a lawyer, coach, and consultant, um, I love for my people to do their numbers, and sometimes they're a little bit reticent about doing the numbers. Um, yeah. And so tell us a little bit about before I jump right into how we fix that or work on those mindsets. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So I'm Carla Titus. I'm the founder and CEO of Wealth and Worth Within. We're a fractional CFO firm. We have a team of CFOs and finance controllers and analysts that are working to support our clients in understanding their numbers and taking control of their financial future by being at the steering wheel of it, not just being a passenger in the car anymore <laughs> and making sure that they're proactively planning for their success and the future growth that they want to see and helping them with tools and insights and data analysis to help them make better financial decisions in their business that are intentional so they can get the results that they want, have cash in the bank, pay themselves well, and make sure they have a profitable, longstanding business. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't want to just be one of those sort of one hit wonders that go up and last five years. And then that's that. So I jumped in a minute ago with mindset. Let's go with that. What do you, what are you seeing as a mindset to overcome when you meet with your client? Yeah. So sometimes we'll bring in our money childhood problems to our businesses or even mm -hmm. our existing management ways of dealing with money personally to our business. And sometimes those could be bad habits. Sometimes it could be very positive things that you bring into your business. So if you're a person that consistently reviews their numbers, they're in tune with what's happening in their business, they're reviewing their P&L every month, and they're making decisions based on data as well as their gut, then maybe you're in a really great place and you brought some really good habits from your personal life. But often we don't see that is the case. Um, we see that people are bringing their traumas and uh, money mindsets that maybe are making them feel stuck. A lot of people think they're not good with numbers and that is their way out of looking at it completely or their will to, to bail, right, from looking at what's happening in their business. And that is what's going to get them in trouble because at some point money will get your attention, whether it's good or bad, it will catch up with you. And you want to prevent that from being a problem. You want a thriving practice where you money is not an obstacle, that you can use money as a tool for growth, for opportunities, to pay yourself well. And make sure that everyone that you employed is also taken care of and that there's plenty of profit left back to invest in the business as well as take as a benefit for you as an owner. But that doesn't happen if you're not looking at your numbers and the money mindset can be deterrent from getting you to look at the numbers, even in the first place, just like a basic step, you know, that sometimes we don't want to do because we're afraid of it or we think we don't understand it and we want to just completely, you know, bury our head in the sand and then look at our numbers. Yeah, I can totally imagine that. What do people say when you say you need to pay yourself first? I mean, I compare it to a job. I'm like, would you do a job for free? And they're like, oh, well, I'm like, exactly. So why would you expect your business that you're putting your hours and all of your energy and all of your effort into to not pay you and compensate you accordingly, especially if you could go get a you know, a job anywhere else and make 200,000 starting, like, why would you not try to strive to at least get that much out of your business? And so I think what ends up happening is owners hire a team and they put them first and they forget about themselves completely. And instead of cutting back expenses and other things to prioritize them as a line item on their PNL, they cut everything else. They cut their salary. They cut everything that's for them and leave everyone else getting paid by themselves. And that leads to frustration, that leads to wanting to quit, that leads to why is this even worth it? Because it's not. And resentment. And then it leaves you empty. You know, you're like, why did I do that? And if we start to prioritize ourselves first in the business by compensating us accordingly, even if that means delaying hiring team or bringing team on later because you're making sure you're covered first, it's what's going to allow you to continue to want to grow this over time and feel like you're achieving at least covering your salary that otherwise you could get somewhere else by just working a job. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great tip. Definitely. Could I be working for someone else with, you know, less stress and a guaranteed amount of money as far as guarantees go? What's your ideal client? Who, who would, who would I know would be someone that you'd work with? Yeah. 
practice is growing. Maybe they've hired you know, a second attorney in the firm. They have some paralegals working with them or they're thinking about what that roadmap might look like. They know they're busy. They know they need some help, some support, but maybe they're feeling a little lost about what they can afford to bring on. Uh, maybe they somewhat look at their numbers, but they're really not sure. <laughs> they're just like trying to get the billables up and make sure that they're getting the hours in, you know, and the retainers in to make sure that the firm can continue to survive and pay everyone and pay themselves. And they really want to focus on that growth. Uh, they want to start to future plan their, for their business. Maybe they're considering an exit in the future one day, but I would say you should always be thinking about an exit because that means your financial plan is always on point, no matter what opportunity presents itself. Or if you never sell it, you'll still be in a great financial position to pay yourself and have that cash runway and continue to invest back in the growth. But they want a concrete plan financially to know what is their next step, how do they get the growth that they want out of the business, and what will it take, and how long would it take for us to get to that next level of growth. That's where a great comprehensive financial plan and clarity comes in to help guide the steps. Rather than just winging it or guessing it or doing things as they come, you get really focused on what is going to move the needle and make that growth happen for your firm. Yeah, I think that's a big difference between having a law of practice and then having a law of firm. Sort of that switching around into having something that would be sellable at some point or bankable. Um, so we all need things to be bankable, at least, even if we're not considering selling it. Yeah, and access to capital is a great way to leverage growth as well. So if you're comfortable with that, we can make that part of the plan to ensure that you're accessing the right level of working capital needed to grow the firm. And also going from a solo mindset to a practice of several firm, you know, in the firm where there's several other attorneys practicing like yourself, it's a very different mindset. You're in a CEO mindset now, and you got to think about your numbers and look at your numbers so you can better control what's happening in the business because it's no longer just you. And the title of your company, uh, the name of your company, Wealth and Worth, Wealth and Worth with N. Tell us about that. Yeah, so it's inspired by one of my first paying clients uh, doing some work around building some wealth for them outside of the business, right? So it's important that business owners don't just leave all the money in the business and keep investing every single dollar. You want to make sure that you're creating and generating some sort of wealth and passive incomes outside of the business for your own personal, you know, wealth building journey and also for making sure that you can take care of yourself one day when you retire. And so that's where the Part of, you know, my name comes in the wealth side. The worth is really around your business valuation. What is your business worth? And how do we grow it to ensure that it's worth something bigger and better every year that you go into business because you're intentionally growing and also growing the profits, which drives the valuation of your company. And within, because we know that owners have it within them to be able to manage this and do this, but sometimes there's a knowledge gap that we're trying to close for them where they never were taught about finances or how to manage business finances, let alone. And they have it within them to do it because they know what's right for their business, but they need an expert to guide the way so that they can help them understand some of the tools, some of the terminology and some of the knowledge that maybe they're missing in order to close that gap and be able to have better conversations around the financials of the business. Yeah, sometimes those are tough conversations, but well worth yes. it. They what definitely you... are. Yeah. What do you do for fun outside of work? For fun. So I have two kids. So like that's always <laughs> a full-time job for <laughs> entertaining them. And then we love to travel. We love to explore other cultures, go to different countries, just eat the food and, you know, get to learn about a new culture. That is definitely top of our list. And when we can't travel, we like to do some dancing. So I used to be a competitive forum dancer back in the day. And so I still do some, you know, West Coast swing and like love to do partner dancing and just the creative outlet that I think a lot of us who love the number side don't get to have. So I intentionally crafted that and I really enjoy it. So that's part of our life and just being active and getting out there. I love that. Did you get to wear the fancy costumes? I did. I definitely have worn all kinds of fancy costumes with a lot of rhinestones. And I did rhinestone a lot of this by hand. So it was really intricate. Wow. That's using a different part of the brain as well. <laughs> had a lot of patience. Oh, yes. A lot of patience. That's for sure. That's awesome. All right. Well, how do people find you to connect with you? Yeah. If you're looking for a fractional CFO for your growing firm, you can reach out to us via our website, wealthworthwithin.com. 
there is a let's connect, you know, a section in our website, you can book a call. We would love to talk to you about your support needs and how we might be able to help you with that. Outsourcing and delegating the financial management of your company while still staying in control of it. And if you are not ready to hire, but want to follow along, we put a lot of educational content for free on our newsletter. You can sign up for it on our website as well, or follow us on social media where we also post consistently educational content at Wealth Worth Within on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. There you go. Covering all the covering all the bases. All right. And all that will be in the show notes. Listeners, you didn't have to take out a pen and write that down. Um, so I just want to thank Carla again for being with us today. Uh, this is the Success Partner Podcast. I am your host, Day and Nate, and please stay tuned. There will be more.